This film production logo is so ballsy I straight up have no idea what company it's for. But good job on being ballsy enough to not include your name, mystery production company. This horse is wild enough to make me wonder why he was ever put on carriage pulling duty in the first place. Did Sherlock have a head start on them? Or is he actually parkouring faster than the cops in the horse and buggy using the rope? Building where they're having a black magic sacrifice of a young woman isn't locked. First point of attack. Robert Downey Jr. is a handsome, fun, charismatic lead actor who cannot do an English accent to save his life. Is it too much to ask that Sherlock Holmes actually be British? I don't know how good at deductive reasoning he is, but he wouldn't have been able to guess that that guy had a floating rip. Are we sure this girl doesn't deserve to be sacrificed? What? I mean, we're sure this girl doesn't deserve to be sacrificed, so what gives with the sacrifice and sh**? Discount the end of mummy days. This guy seems to be late to the ceremony. He also didn't get the memo that they all didn't have to wear the hooded robes. You are a doctor after all. Forcing some dialogue so we all know this is Watson, which is totally necessary because anyone watching this movie couldn't have seen the movie poster, or trailer, or DVD cover that shows Jude Law as Dr. Watson. Here's a Holmes and Watson that can physically and literally kick some ass, and you didn't know how badly you wanted them until you got them, am I right? Two guys who are clearly outnumbered take out all the henchmen cliché. Shouldn't these villains have something more than clubs to protect their crime scene with? Surely a lord could spring for a gun, or lots of guns, right? All of the torches blow out like, not magic. Sherlock Holmes. Roll credits. How did you see that? Because I was looking for it. Sherlock doesn't say, because even though it's clear, it reflects light and is still visible to the naked eye. Was that just a sharpened piece of glass that miraculously didn't break for as long as he was hiding it? Was he hiding it in his sleeve? If so, how did it not stick him in the arm? There are more effective ways to vanquish your enemies beyond shards of glass. Damn, Mark Strong can't catch a break. Brilliant actor, keeps getting villain roles in forgettable action films. Poor bastard. You seem surprised. Be ready for him to say you seem surprised a lot. It's good that they didn't have cell phones in the 1800s, because that guy would totally have gotten fired, but not prosecuted for kicking that dude in the face. If you don't mind. Yeah, sure. You're totally under arrest, but you can walk around without anyone holding on to you to make sure you don't try to escape. If I was the editor of this newspaper, I would have just omitted the picture of the asshole covering his face altogether. Thank you, Captain Phillips. Captain Phillips? Man, Tom Hanks is just a transformative actor, and seemingly so humble to take such a small role. But I'm sure his own spin-off film was in the works from the very beginning. <laughs> Perhaps a nice cup of tea. Watson, at least, is sufficiently English. There are far more bullet holes here than there were shots fired. Was he just trashing his apartment and shooting at the wall for three weeks? And it took Watson to come in and mildly suggest a new case for him to perk up and start looking? The absentee landlady. I feel like shooting a gun at the wall would give her good cause to evict him, so he probably shouldn't be mocking her. What have you done to Gladstone now? What Michael Vick would be doing if he were alive in this time period. There's nothing of interest for me out there on Earth. At all. Holmes perfectly sums up introversion. I think the people who made this film have confused Holmes' deductive reasoning skills with people watching. This waiter is really bold stealing the silverware in front of everyone, instead of in a more secret place. Straighten your tie. If this guy's such a stickler for details, how is he not noticing the waiter who looks like he's straight out of Friday Night Lights stealing the silverware? I have a pile of detective novels at home, Wilkie Collins, Poe. No Arthur Conan Doyle? I hear he's good. Hiding a blade. Five tenths out of steel. What is he proving by showing her something he already knows? Ah, a stub from a boxing match. Now, I can infer that he's a bit of a gambler. You can also infer that he likes boxing, or likes to watch two sweaty dudes hit each other. In this movie, Robert Downey Jr. plays British Tony Stark. At which point you broke off the engagement and returned to England for better prospects. Doctor, perhaps. I didn't leave him. He died. Is Sherlock's jealousy of this woman really so irrational that he would imagine the worst case scenario rather than the most realistic and innocent one? He not only arrived early, but he also ordered before everyone else too? Holmes has always been brusque and eccentric, but this version is just an asshole. I used to be made fun of if I just open palm slap someone in a fight. While I appreciate the way this movie uses boxing to show off Holmes' superior mind, the idea that a reclusive, agoraphobic investigator would regularly participate in chaotic, grimy street fights is beyond what my suspension of disbelief can bear. At the end of the movie, we find out that he's actually just a figment of Edward Norton's imagination. Why is no one else paying attention to her? She's far better dressed than anyone else, and pretty much the only woman in the room. A Victorian-era Irish fight club would come to a screeching halt as soon as she walked in the door. If Sherlock can mentally map out every move of a physical fight, why was it a more evenly matched bout before Adler showed up? This movie has an even bleaker view on London than The Muppet's Christmas Carol does, and that's saying something. We find out later that Lord Blackwood paid this guy off to fake like he's gagging on the ground. And I'm sinning this because we didn't get to see how that exchange went down. Was this guy just corrupted and easily swayed by money? Or was he a really good cop that just never felt like police work was his true calling, and had dreams of being an actor? He saw this as a big opportunity to see if he really had what it takes. If Lord Blackwood is really as dangerous as they all think, and this master manipulator, why did they put him in a jail cell in close proximity with these very impressionable, possibly mentally ill prisoners? Were all their solitary confinement cells taken up by other well-to-do black magic criminal masterminds? I, using musical theory, have created order. I don't think he can call this musical theory. I, however, think you can call it you not knowing how to play the violin. You are Blackwood's last request. And they're just gonna honor it? Who gives a sh**? He's a lord with power, yes, but he's also a scandalous murderer, and there's no reason to cater to him. Do all average rich citizens get one last dying illegal wish? Confused about the geography here. Holmes' shop is in northeast London, and they're headed to Pentonville Prison, which is also in North London. But it looks like, based on this shot, they crossed over London Bridge, heading southbound. 
when there's absolutely no reason to do that. That's like driving from Texas to Mexico to get to Oklahoma. Am I overthinking this? Someone's got to. Watson punches him square in the nose without leaving a scratch or a bruise. Or even a moment of, what the fuck, man? That fucking hurt. You're such a dick. Was picketing more of an art form back then? All of these people really know how to make some good-looking restoration hardware caliber signs. This movie perpetuates the stereotype that British people have bad teeth. That's racist. That's a very clean and starched collar for someone who's been in prison for months. They added some supernatural swoopy sound when he clearly just got up quickly like a normal person. You are sentenced to death for the practice of black magic. Victorian London was pretty backwards, but not that backwards. Were they? Were they? Also, later in the film, we find out that he had some kind of harness to keep him from being choked. And we're supposed to believe that all the people who got a close look at him after this moment, including Watson, didn't notice an apparatus around his torso that would have kept him alive during a hanging. Now that's a little overboard on the emasculating symbolism, huh? Looks like Sherlock keeps his David Crosby disguise handy just in case. Well done, Miss Adler. Irene works for a floating top hat. No one has told Sherlock that he needs a bow to play the violin. After falling through that shed, he sustains no injury. That's the Irene I knew. Isn't the Irene he knew already a street criminal? Hasn't she remained that all along? What does this mean? He found his bow! I still don't think he can play the violin. And they're smashed open from the inside. Holmes tells us at the end of the movie that this slab was broken and put back together with a mild adhesive that would be washed away by the rain, which doesn't explain how it didn't just cave into the tomb, shutting him inside. Were all the cops in 18th century London just five-year-olds who used the Zoltar speaks machine so they could weasel their way into the police force? That's the only logical thing I can come up with to explain why all these cops are scared shitless to do anything concerning Blackwood. Now you get down there and you bring that coffin up now. The inspector didn't have what seemed to be a very effective pep talk with his officers before Holmes and Watson showed up. Holmes is so good, he is apparently allowed to get away with tampering with evidence. See? And when the dead walk, the living will fill these coffins. Is he insinuating that all the living people will be dead? Because if we're all dead, what's to keep us from walking around with those who were previously dead? Unless the dead are going to come and get all the alive people and put them in the coffins. Regardless, this guy has some explaining to do. A supernatural explanation to this case is theoretically possible. No, it's not. The man was likely a drunk. Why is it always assume the worst with these two? M.H. M.H. is for Madison, Madison and, and Haig. Well, isn't that convenient? If Watson is supposed to be this brilliant doctor that has developed considerable deductive powers of his own, how could he not see right through this gypsy woman making very general predictions about his future? Playing dice on a checkerboard, but still using the checkers in some way. What the fuck is this game? The ginger midget wore the same Parisian perfume. Irene must bathe in perfume. If not, there would be no way he could smell it over the ammonium sulfate, phosphorus, formaldehyde, and the rotting carcasses of rats in the other room. Reardon was working with Blackwood. Of course he was. Holmes and I said of course he was at the same time. Arsonists bring along super huge pugilists just in case they encounter private detectives on the scene they're supposed to burn down. Holy sh did someone use the remains of Frank Zappa to construct a Frankenstein monster? A Frank Zappenstein monster? Now would be a great time for Holmes to deduce an exact 10 second way to take this guy down. Some bull blowing away the smoke of a weapon that just did something cool cliche. Holmes must have legs made of steel, or the roads in 18th century London were made entirely of crash pads. This is the third time we've seen where he should have broken something. Why doesn't Holmes have any of his previously demonstrated premonition vision regarding this fight? Discount Donkey Kong. Holmes survived all this shit. These guys somehow got arrested over that in the last scene, and now I wish I'd paid more attention, because I didn't think they did anything arrest-worthy. But I'm also high on cocaine, so pretty sure there would be a separate woman's jail, right? Right? No bail's been posted. I wonder what bail was set up for the two guys who destroyed the shipping yard. To which the barman says, may I push in your stool? <laughs> and we're borrowing scenes from What About Bob. The only baker to use here. Certain French glaze on their lows. Holmes' sense of smell is on a superhero level. If Robert Downey Jr. wasn't already Iron Man, I would submit that Sherlock Holmes should be an Avenger. You might be thinking Amazing Sense of Smell doesn't make a good superhero. And I would respond by saying, remember Hawkeye? He gets to be a top-tier Avenger and all he can do is shoot a fucking bow and arrow. This guy didn't even put up the slightest fight. Holmes basically said they have similar eyes and ears, and Sir Thomas tells everyone his super secret life story. I want you to find him and stop him before he does. To defeat this very powerful dark sorcerer, they will send a detective who doesn't believe in magic. Movie repurposes old-timey footage from Les Mis and from Shanghai Nights. Movie and female lead both intentionally tease my crotch. Not cool. Even for a saucy, sexy, international thief and genius, that is a lot of eye makeup for an 1890s woman. Come with me. Um, uh, I already... I mean, oh yeah, for sure. So Holmes, the amazing deductive detective, didn't notice the lazily hidden syringe, nor could he smell what she put in the wine with his superhero nose. To reiterate, we all know he is not using magic to do all these things, but they never explain how he's able to blow out all the candles at once. I bet when Lord Blackwood was a kid, he never got invited to birthday parties. You know, I have watched this entire movie up until this point without pausing beyond a little bit of note-taking, and I have no idea what the f*** is going on. I'm serious. I'm lost as hell. Why is Sir Thomas's secret black magic room off of the bathroom? I guess practicing black magic makes you very dirty. This satanic star is not upside down, which makes me think it's a Bloods gang symbol as opposed to a satanic thing. A future ruled by us. A future ruled by rich white dudes? 
I've got good news. The civil war has made them weak. True, but that still happened about 25 years prior to these events. For comparison, you know what happened 25 years ago in our real lifetime? Germany's reunification. A lot happens in a quarter century is what I'm saying. A gift for you. Yep, um, no way the bad guy isn't super dead right now. What a contraption. The villain has gone full snightly whiplash. Pledge your lamb to slaughter. Lord Blackwood's voice can really carry with all that madness going on. These German locks always give me trouble. This comment is coming from the man who has yet to successfully pick a lock throughout this entire film. Good of the villain to consistently put Holmes in Batman-style escapable traps. In three, two... Based on the speed in which this contraption is moving, Holmes would have been cut in half on one. How none of them got a 2x4 launched in the sternum is a mystery. Sometimes when he can't figure out a case's solution, Holmes sits in front of a wall full of scribbles and plucks a violin. It somehow helps, don't question it. Holmes, with a sound, analytical mind, scribbles names and other related nouns all over the wall like a madman. Has no one ever taught him the attaching pictures with string technique? Thankfully, this movie about Sherlock Holmes, master of all intuition and logic, turns into some kind of mystical cult ghost death thing, which is the opposite of awesome. Flashback overload! This Watson sash appears to be offering no medical improvement whatsoever. Sure does look nice, though, in that I won the spelling bee kind of way. Very distinctive, those handmade shoes of yours. Are they really distinctive? Zappos has a whole page on their website dedicated to shoes that look just like that. Maybe he started a trend in dress shoes that has persisted over 150 years. No, but I don't care much what you think. Holmes now possesses Blackwood's power of non-directional speaking. There isn't any time to waste then. Holmes reveals his location with a quippy line that he could have avoided and just jumped out of the window, eliminating the possibility of being shot. The three main characters take down all 20-plus henchmen without the slightest injury. I think the chains they are putting on the door should work just fine. I don't know if the group of elderly British men locking arms is going to help. We are now witnessing the longest 12 chimes in the history of Big Ben. Irene was running full force towards what was very obviously the ledge. Maybe she had her eyes closed because she's scared of heights. Moriarty, please don't underestimate him. Irene is just saying, and we need a plot for the next movie. If that is a well-known stone that Irene has stolen, it's probably not a good idea to re-gift it as an engagement ring, which is the most shown-off piece of jewelry. And diamond engagement rings didn't take off for commoners until the 1930s anyway. A Victorian engagement ring would have been a plain gold band. I was trying to deduce the manner in which Blackwood survived his execution. So he decided to test this while he was by himself? If suicide isn't in his repertoire, then idiotic experimentation definitely is. A plague on both your houses! I know Kung Fu. I get your trap! The bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies. It's in the singing of a street corner choir. It's going home and getting warm by the fire. Remember, remember the 5th of November. The gunpowder, treason, and plot.